Hi guys, I'm Dr. Mike, a board certified medical doctor and today we talk about something that's older than your grandma and somehow ended up in the hands of biohackers, including Mr. Johnson. Methylin blue. Now, before you start picturing me turning to a smurf, let me clarify. I'm talking about pharmaceutical grade methylene blue, not the industrial stuff you use to um, clean your fish tanks. Methylene blue has been around since the late 1800s. Originally, it was used as a dye. But over time, researchers discovered that it had medical uses from treating malaria to a rare blood disorder called methemoglobinemia. It's a condition where too much hemoglobin is converted into methemoglobin, which cannot effectively carry oxygen, leading to symptoms like cyanosis, so bluish discoloration of the skin and fatigue. But what really put it on the biohackers map is its potential to enhance cognition and memory. Scientists first became interested in methylene blue as a cognitive enhancer after animal studies showed it could improve memory retention and learning in rodents. These studies suggest that methylene blue might support mitochondrial function and neurotransmitter balance, leading to researchers to test its effects in humans. I'm always curious how researchers come up with something like this. Are they like, hmm, what will I feed the rodents today? What about this industrial dye that I used earlier to clean the fish tank? Methylene blue sounds like a nootropic, meaning a substance that enhances cognitive function, particularly in areas like memory, attention and learning. Straight out of Limitless, right? This reminds me of the YouTube video I once recorded where people got really mad at me for putting the background music so loud. So, let's see what the actual science says about methylene blue. There's a pretty good study published in Radiology where they tested whether a single low dose of methylene blue could improve cognitive function in healthy individuals. It was a double-blinded, placebo-controlled study, so the gold standard in research. First, participants underwent an initial functional MRI scan, then they completed a series of cognitive tasks enhancing or assessing sustained attention and short-term memory. After this, they received either methylene blue or placebo. Following a 60-minute absorption period, they underwent a second functional MRI scan and repeated the same cognitive task to measure any changes in performance and brain activity. The results? Methylene blue increased the brain activity in regions linked to attention and memory, including the prefrontal cortex, the parietal lobe and the insular cortex. However, it did not include blood flow to the brain, which is often associated with metabolic enhancement. This suggests that its effect may be more related to intracellular energy metabolism rather than overall cerebral perfusion. Participants who took methylene blue had a 7% improvement in memory retrieval compared to the placebo. However, it did not improve reaction time, meaning it's not going to turn you into a Formula One driver overnight. Let's break this down. How does methylene blue work in the brain? Methylene blue isn't just a stimulant, it acts as an electron donor in mitochondria. The translation is it helps your cells make more ATP, aka energy, more efficiently. Think of it as a backup generator for your brain, especially in energy-hungry regions like the prefrontal cortex. This is an area that is responsible for focus and decision-making. The prefrontal cortex is, among other things, that is responsible for you not taking off your clothes in a meeting because you're feeling hot. And instead, turn on the AC, impulse control, something we can all benefit from. It also has antioxidant properties, meaning it helps balance reactive oxygen species, RRS. While excess RRS can contribute to aging and neurodegeneration, they are also essential for processes like immune defense and cellular signaling. Methylene blue may also help regulate RRS levels rather than simply eliminating them. The study I mentioned in radiology found increased brain activity in memory-related areas suggesting enhanced efficiency and neural processing. However, other research suggests that in people with perfectly functioning mitochondria, adding extra electron donors like methylene blue might not provide additional or much additional benefit. In fact, in a healthy brain, methylene blue might simply shift the metabolic balance rather than increasing overall ATP production. Here's why. If your mitochondria are already working at full efficiency, 
adding methylene blue doesn't necessarily supercharge them beyond their natural capacity. Instead, it might just streak how the electrons flow through the system, slightly altering the way energy is utilized rather than increasing its output. In some cases, it could even lead to the cells to regulate energy production downward to maintain equilibrium. So while methylene blue is useful in conditions where mitochondrial dysfunction exists, in a healthy individual it might not lead to noticeable cognitive or the physical benefits. Next up is methylene blue in Alzheimer's. Now, while methylene blue might show promise for cognitive enhancement in healthy individuals, it did not live up to expectations in Alzheimer's disease. Two phase three clinical trials tried a stabilized version of methylene blue called LMTM to see if it could slow down Alzheimer's progression by targeting tau protein aggregation, which is believed to play a role in neurodegeneration in Alzheimer's disease although its exact significance remains debated. The first study tested around 900 patients over 15 months, comparing high doses versus low dose active control. The second study followed 800 participants over 18 months using a similar design. The results? High dose methylene blue failed to slow cognitive decline compared to low dose group. No significant improvements in memory, daily functioning or brain atrophy. However, patients who took methylene blue as a monotherapy, meaning without standard Alzheimer's drugs like Mementin, showed a slower or some slower decline. So, why did methylene blue fail? The trials were not placebo controlled. Instead, even the control group received around 5 mg of of LMTM, so methylene blue, which might have already provided benefit, masking any benefits of higher doses of methylene blue. Also, there's the potential of drug interactions. The results? High dose methylene blue failed to slow cognitive decline compared to the low dose group. There was also no significant improvement in memory daily functioning or brain atrophy. However, Patients who took methylene blue as a monotherapy, meaning without the standard Alzheimer drugs like Mementin, showed some slower decline. So why did methylene blue fail? First, the trials were not placebo controlled. Instead, even the control group received 4 mg of methylene blue, which might have already provided benefits, benefits masking any effects of higher doses. Second, there is drug interactions. Methylene blue seemed to work better in patients not taking any other Alzheimer drug medications, possibly due to pharmacokinetic issues. And the third is targeting tau protein alone may not be enough to slow Alzheimer's. Since the disease is also driven by the amyloid beta, then the inflammation and vascular dysfunction. While methylene blue based therapies might still have potential, these trials showed that it's not a magic bullet for Alzheimer's. Does it mean you should take it? Okay, let's be real. A 7% increase in memory retrieval is nice, but it's not exactly turning you into Einstein. It's a compound with interesting properties that might give you an edge, especially in situations of high cognitive demand or aging. But, here, but here's where I issue a big fat warning. There are side effects. At low doses, methylene blue is generally well tolerated, but at high doses, it can be toxic, causing serotonin syndrome. If, especially if combined with antidepressants, and it can also cause nausea. And be warned, it turns the pea blue. What about long-term safety? We don't know. Most human studies have focused on acute side effects only. And there's also the placebo effect. If you think you're smarter, you might just act smarter. That's just psycholo psychology 101. So, what's my final verdict? Is methylene blue the next big nootropic? It has real effects on brain metabolism and memory, but it's not a guaranteed ticket to Mensa. If you're curious and willing to experiment safely, the research suggests a very broad range of doses, around 0.5 to 4 mg per kilogram body weight. This might be the dose worth trying. Just don't go overboard and for the love of science, don't mix it with antidepressants. I recently ordered methylene blue because I wanted to try it, but after reading up on it, I decided to return it. Thank you for watching and till the next time.